I truly believed as well in our business, this, the most successful people are doing the same thing every week. What's your thoughts on, on having a system of success? Want me to preach on that? Let's do it, bro. I'd love to hear it, man. Yeah. So the thing is, is that you have to think about insurance sales like an assembly line, right? You have to not make it, make the complex simple. What really matters in being successful in insurance sales? And it's what you said earlier, Cody, it's seeing the people doing sales presentations with prospects, but not just that, doing it a number of times a week. I like to talk about the magic number 15. I think 15 presentations is where a lot of the magic happens in this mm. business. And if you're hitting less than that, there's so much variability yeah. that you're probably not going to see the results you want. <clears throat> so the, the thing is, is, well, okay, I can say I can do 15 presentations a week. Or I can say I'm going to write six, seven, eight apps a week, whatever the deal is. But how do I actually get there, right? Mm. What's my roadmap from proclaiming a goal and actually achieving it, not just on a monthly or even weekly basis, but a daily basis, okay? So for me, the big thing I'm talking about on my channel with my agents this year is you've got to be process obsessed, not Mm. results obsessed, process over results. Why? Because the process, hitting process goals, ultimately produces results, right? Meaning, adhering to your system of activity and achieving those daily goals adds up, you know, the first step in a thousand miles kind of thing. And if you're not doing that and you're underachieving those goals, what's going to happen? You're not going to hit your goals. Every time I talk to, well, I'll say every, about 90% of the time I talk to agents, you know what their biggest reasons why they're not successful? It's because they're not doing enough activity. Yeah. They're, they probably are going to say something like, if I just get in front of somebody, I'll sell them. And I believe them, you know? Or the lead suck, or the, I'm going to not get with objections, yeah. or I'm not good on the phone, or, you know, nobody wants to buy, you know, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. But if you start pulling back the layers of the onions and you see, yeah, these leads suck, I only did two appointments, it's like, well, you only did two appointments. That's what really the problem is. Yeah. You know, so. I think having a system to achieve that is important and that's going to combine, depending on your marketing niche and what you're doing, you got to have a, 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 obviously a niche, a product that you're selling, say final expense. You've got to have a lead system that's proven to work. Uh, Lots of options there. Uh, And you've, I think mentorship comes along with that systemized approach and putting on paper, your plan of action. And as they say in, in stock trading, you know, plan your trade, and trade your plan. You know, what, what you put on paper, make sure that you execute on a daily basis and have somebody as a sounding board to make sure to keep you accountable that you're going to do it. Hmm. Is there any, there any uh, how do you recommend an agent um, keep track of their uh, activity or what, what's, what, what's important to track? Well, I mean, I'm sure you. Yeah. So, I keep it simple. I just have a spreadsheet I created uh, with some formulas on calculating basic metrics like, you know, average no-show rate, how many appointments it takes over the phone, how many calls it takes to set an appointment, how many door knocks it takes to set an appointment, how many leads you need to purchase each week, uh, Hmm. return on investment. Um, So the thing is, is that we're, we're basically taking the end goal right? Which is how many sale, how much money you want to make, right? Yep. But you're, you got to granularize it, go all the way down to the basics, which is, you know, big goals start with prospecting calls. So for me, again, the biggest thing for agents to track is their calls, is their door knocks. And from there, how many presentations are they getting and are they achieving their daily and weekly goal? you know, weekly is 15. You work five days a week. You need to do three appointments a day. Mm. Well, how many, how many door knocks or calls do I have to make? Well, you know, maybe it's 50. It's maybe it's 10 door knocks. Your goal is to do that. And if you just understand that, that if you hit those goals and you're tracking your numbers, so you know, in live time, what numbers are actually you need to hit to hit this, then it'll all work itself out. Yep, exactly. I was just, I was just, uh, training and coaching an appointment setter and an agent. And I was challenging the appointment setter to encourage them to track dials, people I speak, conversations, appointment set, appointment sit every single week as, a, as an appointment setter. 
And it's the freaking exact same thing. You know, it's that system of success. Here, here's the thing um, about tracking your activity. It, you'll automatically see a boost in your results. There's, it's been time and time again in sports and business. If you keep track of what you do, there's just something that happens that it gives you a lift in your, even if you do nothing else different, you just write your goals down, right? It's kind of the same thing. If you, people who are most successful in their life, write their goals down, they carry it with them, they know what they are, they rehearse them. It's the same thing. This is the same thing. Your system's on paper or online, whatever it is, on a spreadsheet. You track it, you keep on top of it. There's just some, I don't know what it is, just momentum yeah. that builds from it. That's, dude, I love that you brought that up. Like you could, I've got a massive smile on my face right now because I'm big, I'm a big goal guy. Um, and a lot of people, there's a lot of people that think it's, you know, goals are stupid and cheesy and whatever else, but they probably won't ever reach anything either. Uh, what's your opinion on goals, goal setting? I'd even love you to freaking share one of your own personal goals if you're okay doing that. Yeah. So, um, Oh, so opinion, let me answer the first part and I'll answer. Yeah. Um, your opinion on goal setting, how you should set goals, what kind of goals <laughs> you set, especially as an, as an agent. Yeah. So the great thing is, this is exactly the same conversation we had uh, just in, not in terms of activity, but in terms of goals, but it's the same extrapolative process. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, you know, what do you want? Okay. What's a challenging, but achievable goal. And then after you've determined that, how are you going to get there, right? Mm. Where are you today, January 1st? And how are you going to get to whatever that is? Let's say, you know, whatever that goal is, 200,000. And you just do the numbers and crunch so you can devise a daily plan, okay? Again, I've moved from more of a weekly perspective to a daily perspective because, mm -hmm. you know, today is the day of action. We, we, now is what we can control. And so our objective, our purpose is to hit those objectives. So I, I, the same thing, Cody, I don't know if I'm answering the question well. No, I, you are I, good. I good. look at, I look at a major goal and then put a pathway to get there. And I'll, I'll tell you what I'm doing in my business. So that's good. Um, I have a goal of doubling my internet traffic. So the way that I have internet traffic right now is predominantly through YouTube, but also through search engine optimization. And I played around on different mo mediums, like so different social media to try to see what's the most beneficial to my business. And what's been the most beneficial to me has been YouTube first and then second, but I think a huge opportunity is in search, Google search. Yep. So um, I believe there's an opportunity to greatly increase the amount of traffic that I'm getting through the creation of more better useful content. So I've got some strategies and some ideas based around creating articles that are going to help agents who have questions about which specific agency to join, kind of like mm -hmm. review articles. And through that process, I'm going to be helping more people. But I know that some of those people who are going to be checking those websites will be interested in me too, a minority of them, but that's exactly the goal. So, um, and how am I going to do that? Well, I've got a spreadsheet here um, by day, 360, 365 days of which article I'm writing each day. The whole so year, I, huh? The whole year, the whole year. Yeah. I laid out except for <sighs> July and December. I'm not working in July, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah. So, so this, Dang, is dude. A, this is just a, a basic minimum expectation. My personal opinion on things is I always try to beat my expectations. So mm. I've given myself two weeks to write this particular article I'm writing right now. I'll be done with it in a week. So then I'll be able to do more. So I don't think about taking time off. I like to do more. So all my brain will, will crunch different problems. I'll create problems so I can solve something. You know, I don't yeah, want yeah, yeah. devil doesn't like idle hands or whatever that idle hands or devil plays things. So there you go. That's I right. Am, so. um, I can tell yeah. that you're like that. What'd you say? I can tell that you're like that. I, I, that's, I think that's a blessing and a curse to both of us. It is a blessing and a curse. I, I will tell you this. I've, I've tried to work on being more content. <laughs> but it's, I, it's, I just, you know, I think if you're a creative person, you're just a creative person and you've got to drive to create or to do content or whatever it is that is pat. It's hard to just like, you're, that's you. It's hard to deny that. So. Yep. Yep. So you, I love that. You want to double your internet traffic. Thank you for sharing that. That's great, dude. Yeah, I love sure. that. That's good, man. Um, 
So back here's, to my, the, here's my goal book, okay, guys? Ooh. So like this here too, I carry this around everywhere. So let me just like this, there's a bunch of stuff that I did this year, different plans. Damn. You know, I'm right. I, I write stuff down. I'm, I don't, yeah. I don't like using the computer or word processors to write down my ideas. I know that's not how everybody thinks. Maybe it's cause I'm kind of like in that millennial generation X range, but I like writing things down cause I really think writing things down. Yeah. Cements things differently. You're actively involved. You're writing, you're moving your fingers. You get to think slowly cause you don't write as fast as you type. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do you have the occasion? I just did this. I end up doing it every freaking weekend. Um, the, the, the weekend right before Christmas, did, I, I did like a massive brain dump uh, where mm -hmm. I had just freak ideas were flowing like crazy. I'm just like dumped them all out. Do you do that? Sometimes. Um, the one thing I've noticed with myself, I, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing and a curse is that focus is harder to come by for me with all the ideas that I've had. And so like a big thing I've done this year is, you know, I was building a, a consumer facing website. I mentioned it to you last year. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to create traffic, but I had a heart to heart with myself because I was not just doing that. I've also got YouTube. I've also got books I'm doing. I also got this, you know, recruiting. And I asked myself, what do I really want in life? Cause you can be anything you want to be in life, but you can't be everything. Right. Mm. So, um, for me, I love recruiting. I love training agents. It's, it's more, it's more passionate to me than actually selling. Yeah. And so I can achieve my goals financially and, and creatively, which is just as important through this process of going all in. So I've always been all in well to an extent, but now I'm even more all in because I've That's put funny. everything else beside me. Like I was going to do different things outside of this in the business, but I'm all in on this because I, I, this is what I'm good at. It's what I enjoy. And if I just do more of it, one thing every day, talk to agents times 10 years, you know, I'll be pretty, hopefully pretty well set. That's huge, man. There's so many, there's tens of thousands of ways to make money in this business. And it's, there is, yeah. that's a huge curse to, you know, I mean, yes. you've, you've had agents that have probably made a quarter million dollars and, a squirrel, a squirrel runs by holding a Medicare card and oh. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. It's funny. Cause I'm, I'm looking, I'm was looking for a book over here by a guy. Gosh, I forget his name. Is that it right there? Sorry. I don't, I don't mean to No, You're right. You're good. But, uh, good. It, it's, Rand, it's Randall Baskin. You ever heard of Randall Baskin? Uh, -uh. he started American continental before it sold to uh, Aetna didn't buy it originally. Some other company did then Aetna okay. bought them out. But I, uh, reading his book is like, if you've read Napoleon Hill, it's, it's Napoleon, it's applied Napoleon Hill, think and grow rich. Okay. Mm. So what do I mean by that? You actually get to see someone go through their walk of life and go through this process of, of severe poverty and then grow themselves into a multimillionaire. You know, this is a guy in middle Tennessee, rural, living in dirt floors. His parents were nuts. You know, they abused them, but he turned his life into something incredible and, and helped tons of people. But um, the one thing I wonder, the reason I bring that up is this is like in the 1940s, 50s, there wasn't access to as much information as there is now. And while that's a good thing, I think on the whole, he only had one insurance opportunity. He didn't, he couldn't mm -hmm. have the space to think about five different ideas, Medicare, annuities, final expense. And sometimes I think that's probably a good thing. You know, it's just give yourself the time to do one thing instead of being pulled because we know recruiters are calling you constantly. You're seeing our videos and you're second guessing yourself. You know, there's a level of trying to put blinders on once you've determined right. what you're going to do and just, just do that. Yep. Yeah. I, I, sometimes I feel bad because I do, I'll do, di you know, videos on different topics and it's, and then someone will reach out and I'm like, well, the point wasn't for you to like freaking change your whole business plan Yeah. because you watched a video, you know? So, yeah, well, you know, Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk says, has said in a couple of his videos, Gary, Gary V, a uh, big yeah. social media influencer kind of guy. Huge, huge. Um, he talks about once you, once you see my stuff and you get it, just shut my stuff up, off and just go to mm. work. Like, so he, he says things like, once you figure it out, you don't need to have this ongoing effort. It's like, focus on your goals. Yep. 
So, so yeah, no, I agree with you too. I've, I've long thought about putting out a video that says, stop watching my videos. <laughs> only, only after you decide what you want to do. Yes. As, uh, but, do you, yeah. Do you really want that though? I mean, I, if it, if it helps them sell and be successful and follow through. Yeah. Uh, if, if they're not sure, there's nothing wrong with being unsure. Just yeah. understand you're not going to be, I don't think you can be a hundred percent like, well, there's few people who are completely a hundred percent dialed in, believe in the total zealots about what it is, their cause, their product that they're selling or whatever. But the vast majority of us will have doubt, you know, doubt's yeah. okay. You know, it's just not letting a smidgen of doubt get in the way of, of actually doing something. And that happens yeah. to a lot of people. The doubt seeps in and they talk themselves out of taking a chance, taking a chance to get out of their comfort zone. And it's tragic because that's the only way you get better, right? Is when you put pressure on yourself to perform and do something different. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dude, man, we, we could go for hours. Dude, we I love this. I love this, man. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Hey, there's five words right now. You should never say, you got to stop saying, promise me you'll stop saying them. Well, dude, I don't know what the words are. Over the next few minutes, you'll know, and you will never use them again. All right, number one. Okay, number one. And, and, and as I preface why we're going into this,